What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is October 13th of 2022. We had our big CPI print. We got the worst numbers imaginable. And the market ended up rallying. Let's talk about it. S&P 500 finished up 2.64%. Our NASDAQ QQQ finished up 2.35%. IWM small caps finished up 2.48%. The dogs of the Dow were up 2.88%. Heavily invested in the banks for the Dow. And we had the ARK Innovation ETF finish down 0.22%. With the long-term treasury ETF finishing down 0.96%. Almost all these indices... They all closed pretty much towards the top end of their day's range. We did have a contraction in volatility across the board other than in TLT. And you can see we had 84% small cap advancers, which is great. We had 82.8% up volume. And the trend model flipped from a negative three to a negative one at the beginning of the day. A few minutes later, we're at positive one. So we are finally out of this bearish sequence according to our model. Today's economic data, of course, we got the CPI. And we talked about this in prior evening videos saying that the market has pretty much priced in a really bad inflation print. And we even saw yesterday with the PPI, we got a hotter than expected print, market barely moved. ARC was actually higher yesterday, despite that event. Now today, CPI on a core basis, hotter than expected. On a year over year basis, a little bit hotter than expected non-core, month over month, you name it, it was worse than we thought. And the initial jobless claims, they came in at 228,000 versus an expectation of 225. Now let's take a look, CPI month over month. You can look at this two ways. You can say, hey, compared to the last like six or nine months, things are getting a little bit better. So you can see this big red arrow here. But if you compare against the last two months, things are going the wrong way. So because this inflation thing, it's been a problem, we don't have any evidence really in hand. I mean, there there definitely is some if you look at specific inflation metrics. Uh, you know, prices are starting to go down, but in terms of the CPI, we have no evidence that this is coming down just yet. And then if we look at our year over year, this is starting to come down, and it's going to come down even more just due to base effects as we start to lap the beginning of the Ukraine and Russia conflict. Um, but it's definitely not going down as much as everyone would like it to. And you can see we had increases in prices of shelter, food, and medical care services. These were the largest of many contributors to the increase. And shelter costs and rent make up about 40% of the CPI. So basically, in a nutshell, until we start to see those rents coming down, we are not going to see the CPI come down. And is this like a huge mega problem? Like rents just won't come down? Not really. Maybe for the market it is, but the market operates on such a different timetable than the real economy. I mean, for the market, they sniff out these interest rate increases. They price them into the market ahead of time. By the time you get to the interest rate hike, it's already priced in. So the market's just reacting to all these higher rates in an instant. Whereas for the real economy, yeah, mortgage rates have been going up. It's been a painful process it has happened at a pretty quick rate now mortgage rates are at about like seven percent for a 30-year fixed mortgage wild stuff and rest assured that is going to start putting pressure on rents and home prices as well but it's just not like this overnight thing where like oh my gosh it hasn't happened yet now we need to do another 75 bips now another now another like give it a couple months and i'm sure these are going to start coming down and at this point, the Federal Reserve has been pretty clear in their communication that they are going to be doing Federal Reserve uh, rate hikes. Excuse me, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, it's been a long day. So they're going to be doing their hikes of the federal funds rate, excuse me, until we get to about 45 to 5%, at which point they are going to pause. And they've made that abundantly clear. Now the bond market has priced that in. All right, we're going to go up to 45 5%, good. Let's price that in. Of course, it's very violent. And it doesn't help when you have like pension funds in the United Kingdom blowing up currency crisis abroad. Like that is just not good. But now we're at a point where it's like, all right, the bond market is pretty much caught up to the Fed. The Fed's communicated. Once we get up to this level, we're going to pause. 
So we ended up having a pretty nice rally off of these hotter than expected inflation numbers. Tomorrow we have retail sales. We have Michigan consumer sentiment. And if we didn't sell off on the CPI, you know, I don't really think these are going to sink us. But you never know. Rate hike probabilities we were just mentioning. Now we have almost a 100% probability of that 75 basis point rate hike in two and a half weeks. So now that's priced in, we have to remember positioning has been super, super light. Everyone is either in cash or short. So if you're in cash and you go, all right, well, that's priced in. We know what the Fed's going to do. We know where they're going to stop. You know, where's a good entry point for stocks? I mean, this is really where investors are going to start allocating. So you can see the VIX futures term structure. It is not fully uninverted, but we are getting there. And I think this is a good metric. If you want to see, like, when are we going to be out of the eye of the storm? Once you see these two front months uninvert, and even the first month versus the third month, when that uninverts, you know, that'll pretty much mean this vol event is over. But the VIX is still pretty elevated. Then this heat map, you can see we got a pretty incredible bounce across the board. And sectors. I actually revamped this dashboard a bit today, and I'm pretty pumped for it. So now it not only shows the day's change, the day's range, it also shows the implied volatility of the asset and how that is changing day over day. So it's pretty good. Like if you see like the price is going up, but the implied volatility is not going up or not going down, excuse me, that could be a divergence. In the morning, for example, when the market was on the lows, there's something that we pointed out. The VIX was not moving higher. And that was a really good tell that the market could potentially bounce. So look at this. Um, Yeah, so this was in our Discord. This was like, yeah, this was at 8.46 a.m. You know, the S&P 500, negative almost 2% in pre-market after the hot CPI report. We took out the downside VPOC and kept running. And that said, the VIX at 33.29 prices in a 2.1% daily move, and we're pretty much already at the daily move. With the VIX red so far this morning, it's tough to expect further downside from these levels in order to get more downside. We need to see the VIX expand and flip green intraday. This could certainly happen, because at the time I didn't know. Um, but the VIX just remained red. So it's good to understand, like, what is the VIX? What's the implied volatility of the asset that you're trading? What does that imply in terms of a daily move? And that's what we have in this column right here. And, uh, you know, if you get to that implied move, but the implied volatility is not expanding, that oftentimes is pretty much where the move ends. So definitely cool that we got this dashboard, you know, enhanced up and running. But what were the big advancers for today? We did see uh, financials of 4.13%, regional banks of 4.43%, and European financials were also up pretty big as well. We have earnings season kicking off tomorrow, and it's going to start with those banks. And it looks like they were bid ahead of the prints. So we'll have to see how those go. Also noteworthy in the XLK ETF, that's the technology that's heavily concentrated in the mega caps. That went up 3.11% and it happened on 2.72 relative volume. So that's uh, pretty significant right there. Style factors, the best performer was high div low vol up 3% and high beta was the underperformer only up 1.63%. In terms of trades, what did we do today? I did get long some WWE common shares for 75.51, been watching this stock for quite a while and just never pulled the trigger on it. So it's like this thing is close to breaking out. I do want to make a trade here. So got long that. Also closed out the DWAC, December 17 and a half puts for 285. I'd paid 375 for those. And I put here, it's rarely ever worth buying puts on an asset that trades at an implied volatility of over 100%. Um, so I noticed like all the dynamics we talked about earlier where there's a high odds the market could increase off the lows this morning. This was the only short that I had on the books. I saw DWAC was squeezing on this headline of like, you know, getting into the app store. And yeah, when you have implied volatility that jacked up and you got a market bias kind of conflicting with the position and you know, whatever, it was just like, let me just get out of this thing. So I took those proceeds, moved it into the ARC, October 21st, 35, strike calls for $1.45. Right now, these are marking at maybe like two bucks. So doing okay on those so far. 
Um, but that is a pretty short term position on top of my longer term positions in ARC. Now let's take a look at the markets here. S&P 500, again, the trend model flip positive, which is good. And look at this. We had the two big bounce days, then we gave it all back, right? And we had like five or six red days in a row. Today's action, we took out this downside VPOC. We washed out. I know everyone's saying, oh, we never get a market panic or whatever. That looks like a panic to me. And we bullish engulfed three consecutive daily candles. And that means that anyone that sold their holdings on any one of these three candles is pretty much now like, oh, shoot. You know, now I have to buy back in at a higher price unless we get a dip. Uh, that could certainly happen, but we'll have to see. Keep in mind, we are a little bit extended away from that five-day EMA. We'll have to see how it looks tomorrow. But remember, pretty much every day you test the five-day exponential moving average. So if we end up pulling back, let's say to like 36.56, we tag the five-day EMA. To me, that's not really a concern to like, you know, start panicking or anything like that. It happens literally almost every day. But look how close we are to the 20-day simple moving average. And it's really because we've been in a downtrend for so long. This thing is caught down to price, especially because price hasn't really moved for about two to three weeks, right? I mean, if you look at where we are now, we're at the same prices as we were back over here, 923, September 24th. So the 20-day simple moving average is now an easier hurdle to clear. I would imagine there's trend followers that have to buy back in above that. So I think, you know, in terms of getting a short squeeze, the bar is pretty low here. I see a lot of investors that they're like, there's no way that could have been a low. There's no way. And it's like, we got the worst imaginable, imaginable CPI report and PPI report. And the market rallied. We have not gotten really any good news over the past like month or two. So imagine, what would this look like if we start getting good news, what would happen with positioning this low and pretty much everyone's so short? I mean, I think there's some good asymmetry to the upside, at least in the immediate term. Of course, if we get another two, 3% days in the market, that risk reward is going to deteriorate. But I think, you know, things look good for now. S&P 500 on the hourly chart, this is important. We did rally up to the weekly value where you're low. And we found some resistance there, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. The market put in a huge move today. And intraday, we have like a 6% range today. So yeah, no problem at all. But this is for tomorrow. And for next week too, we have this 36.95 spot 25 level. Definitely worth watching uh, to see if we can get back inside of value. And that could really trigger an even further you know, squeeze to the upside. I want to point out the VIX. Remember, this was red in the pre-market, even when the S&P was down like 2%. We put in a red candle, which is good, but we're still elevated. The VIX is still at a 31.94, so we can still expect large daily moves, large intraday swings uh, for the rest of the week, and as long as the VIX stays at this elevated level. Dollar index, this was the good thing. Look at this. The dollar index finished down 0.78%. And we bearish engulfed a few candles as well. Now it's starting to look like there's the chance that the dollar index put in a lower high, which would be great. That's what we want to see. Like This is the root of our problems. The dollar index just ripping, ripping, ripping. And now that the bond market has pretty much gotten onto the same page as the Fed, perhaps some of this pressure off the dollar comes off, which would be a good thing. Let's look at our bonds. This morning when I looked at them originally, I was like, oh my gosh, they were falling out of bed. Now the bonds did not flip green today, but we did rally off the lows and we got back into the range we've been in the past three or four days. And so same thing with ARC. I think ARC really follows the bonds very closely. And so it's kind of frustrating, like, man, ARC didn't even participate today, finished down 0.22%. But I do think, let's say tomorrow the bonds are green, I would imagine that the ARK Innovation ETF will probably be green as well. Now let's take a look. And the ARK was up yesterday, even though the S&P 500 was down. 30-year treasuries, same exact thing. We slipped into the abyss and we rallied higher. Let's see what we can do from here. And again, like I think if we don't get 
any good news and like we keep getting bad news are we gonna have like an excellent rally probably not <laughs> but i think if we pretty much get either like no news or anything that is good then i think we have a lot of room to the upside i think there's a lot of asymmetry it's not like anyone knows what the market's gonna do next but i do like the risk reward here now let's take a look at the nasdaq nasdaq and q same exact sequence put in a nice hammer candle took out a downside of epoch which is good russell 2000 did this one make a lower low yeah the russell 2000 scummed the lows look at that i'm sure there were a couple stops down there that were taken but yeah we got under those lows and look the russell 2000 it's back in the monthly value area and we're above the 20-day simple moving average that's definitely a nuance that uh, is worth paying attention to. This really looks like it could be like a W, you know, double bottom. So we'll have to see what happens. It's going to be so obvious in hindsight. Like people don't believe it right now. When you look at the pattern the Russell's putting in, if it were to zip to the upside, let's say retest the 50-day SMA, it would be like, well, it was obvious. We got all that bad news and the market wasn't going lower for, you know, a couple of weeks there. So it's always obvious in 2020 hindsight. And then ARC... This is really the one that just fell out of bed. And these two lines, these are the summer lows. So we had one day, undercut the lows, closed above. Day two, undercut the lows, closed above. Day three, on the worst CPI print, undercut the lows and rallied back above. So I do think that there's some upside for ARC as well. I think ARC could end up getting back inside this monthly value where I have this trend line drawn definitely worth watching that trend line and then let's take a look wwe this is the trade that i put on today wwe this is like textbook pattern where we're trading on the highs even though the market is essentially on the lows looks like it's being accumulated if you look at the weekly chart you can see the all-time highs were at about 100 bucks i love what's going on with the wwe uh daniel cormier who's a former UFC world champion, wrestling Olympic wrestler as well. He uh, He's definitely very big in that MMA community, huge. He has his own YouTube channel. And he just became like a guest uh, referee in the WWE. So I really think like now what's going on with WWE, the UFC, boxing, they're all mixing their audiences and mixing the talent. So I think they're all going to grow. I think the chart's really showing that, like something different's going on here. So we'll have to see what happens, team. So yeah, heading into tomorrow, I would be watching the dollar. Because if the dollar just, oh yeah, now we're going to bullish engulf this candle that we put in today. You know, that's certainly not good. The balance isn't going to hold. But if you see the dollar index red tomorrow, you know, there's no reason to think that we can't move a little bit higher with these equities. All right, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We will see you all tomorrow.